But instead, I found a president ready to put the vote and the strike on hold while he gives more time for diplomacy. Mr. President, thanks for talking with us. Thank you so much. Syrian President Assad says there will be repercussions mm -hmm. if there's a U.S. military strike that we should, quote, expect everything. You keep talking about limited, targeted right. military action, but the fact is you don't know what happens mm -hmm. after you order a strike. Well, actually, we know what uh, Assad's capabilities are. And, you know, Mr. Assad's military capabilities are significant compared to uh, a bunch of uh, opposition, many of whom are not fighters. Uh, they're significant relative to over 400 children that were gassed. Uh, they're not significant relative to uh, the U.S. military. Uh, some of their allies, Iran, Hezbollah, do have the capacity to carry out asymmetrical uh, strikes. But uh, keep in mind that uh, even Assad's allies recognize that uh, he crossed the line in using chemical weapons. Iran itself was subjected to chemical weapons used by Saddam Hussein. Uh, their populations remember what terrible weapons these are. There is a reason why uh, almost the entire international community uh, has uh, signed uh, a ban on chemical weapons, even during hot wars. And it's because they're indiscriminate. And so my narrow concern right now uh, is making sure that Assad does not use those chemical weapons again. And you know, we've seen some indications from the Russians as well as the Syrians today uh, that they may be willing to look at the prospect of getting those weapons under control, perhaps even uh, international control and getting them out of there where they could be vulnerable to use by anybody. And that's something that we're going to run to ground uh, over the next couple of days. Well, let me ask you about that, because there has been this interesting development today. The Russians say they're going to push Syria to put chemical weapons under international control. The Syrian foreign minister says he welcomes that. Right. Will you delay a strike mm -hmm. to see how that plays out? Uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, we would not be at this point without a credible threat of a military strike, but I welcome the possibility of the development, and uh, John Kerry will be talking to his Russian counterparts. Uh, I think we should explore and exhaust uh, all avenues of diplomatic resolution of this, uh, but I think it's important for us to keep the pressure on and to quote, uh, or to paraphrase at least, uh, uh, a, a uh, former U.S. President, uh, Ronald Reagan, uh, it's not enough just to trust. I think we're going to have to verify. So the question is, can we construct something that allows the international community to have confidence that these terrible weapons will not be used? So again? would you delay a congressional vote until you see where this goes? Well, I, th I, I think that uh, in discussions with members of Congress, uh, what we've said to them is that there's a reason why I slowed this thing down to allow for a congressional debate. Uh, part of it was because given that the threat was not direct and imminent to the United States, despite uh, me believing I have the authority to take uh, action, I thought it was best for us to actually have this debate because we've gone through a lot of war and people are frankly suspicious of a lot of uh, decisions. But, uh, but sir, if but we, have, I, and, and, we have limited time. I just want to ask, will you delay a vote? The, uh, uh, I am going to make sure that uh, this does not change the calendar of debate in Congress. But there was no expectation that this would be, uh, that Congress would uh, be finished with its deliberations over the next week or so. I mean, clearly it's going to take more time, partly because the American people aren't convinced. So uh, I'm doing interviews tonight. I'm going to speak to the American people tomorrow. Uh, a debate will begin in Congress over the next several days. But you think that's going to go over a couple of weeks? Uh, I do believe that it's going to take some time. But look, uh, you know, Chris, you, uh, you guys have polls and uh, you do head counts. And... Right now, the American, the, right now, the American people are not persuaded. Right now, members of Congress who are just getting back still have questions. So we're going to have time to have a good deliberation in Congress. We will pursue this diplomatic track. Uh, I fervently hope that this can be resolved in a non-military way. But I think it is important for us not to let the, uh, you know, the, the pedal off the metal. Uh, when it comes to making sure that they understand we mean what we say about these international bans on chemical weapons. Had you discussed this when you were in St. Petersburg with President Putin, the idea of Russia intervening uh, to try to get them to turn over their chemical weapons? Or do you worry that this could be the Russians, and they have a history of this, trying to throw a monkey wrench into this whole process? Uh, I did discuss this with President Putin. 
Uh, this is something that is not new. I've been discussing this with uh, President Putin for some time now. The last time uh, we were at a G20 meeting in Los Cabos last year, uh, I suggested the need for the United States and Russia to work together to deal with this particular problem. It doesn't solve the underlying Syrian conflict, but if we can solve this chemical weapons issue, which is a threat to us uh, and the world, then it does potentially lay the groundwork for further discussions around how you can bring about a political settlement inside of Syria that would, would provide relief to uh, people who right now are being displaced or killed on almost a, a continuing basis. Would, would you set some kind of a deadline or a time frame for uh, the, the yeah. Syrians to turn over their chemical weapons? You're not going to let this go on for months. No. Uh, so I, I think that we should be able to get a fairly uh, rapid uh, sense of how serious they are. Uh, we have uh, the UN inspectors are going to be issuing a report fairly soon. Uh, I think in parallel with some of the debate that's taking place in Congress, uh, we are going to be immediately talking to the Russians and looking for uh, uh, some actual language uh, that they might be proposing. Uh, the UN Secretary General uh, has expressed an interest in working with us on this. Uh, and so we'll put this on a fast track. Uh, I am uh, in part confident about our ability to thoroughly examine this because in consultation with the Joint Chiefs of Staff, they've assured me that uh, when I make a decision uh, to launch a strike, they can do it and still be effective, whether it's today, tomorrow, or a month from now. But finally, sir, I, I want to talk, you talk about the hole that you're in on Capitol Hill. The latest vote count shows mm -hmm. 238 members either against or leaning against, mm -hmm. 26 members in favor. A new Fox poll finds just 36 percent of Americans support a U.S. attack. And I guess my question is, how much responsibility do you think you bear mm -hmm. for the opposition? Uh, for two years, you said we did not have a direct national security interest in Syria. Uh, you said that the White House said that they did uh, not, you did not seek congressional approval until you decided that you did. Uh, you talk more about what you're not going to do in Syria than what you are going to do. And today, John Kerry said that any attack would be un believably small. The chairman of the House Intelligence, Mike Rogers, says that you have done, the White House has done a bad job in explaining that this has been a mess. Okay. Uh, that, that was a long question. Let's see if I can keep the, sh uh, the answer shorter. I, I think that this is a very difficult situation in Syria. Everybody understands that. Uh, I continue to believe uh, that there is not a military solution to the underlying conflict, uh, which is in part sectarian, uh, and that the American people are right not to want to have us entangled in a sectarian civil war inside of Syria. Uh, but I have also been consistent in saying that the ban on chemical weapons is something that does affect our interests directly. That has been a consistent position. I have not changed it. Uh, and I think that there is a tendency to say if we are going to solve the chemical weapons ban, then that must mean we also have to take on and own the entire, uh, entire Syrian conflict. Uh, I reject that proposition. Uh, I think that we, as we're seeing now in these international discussions uh, with the, the Russians uh, and potentially the Syrians, there is a way for us to preserve a ban against the worst weapons that threaten our troops, that threaten people around the world, that threaten in terms of proliferation, uh, uh, you know, attacks, uh, threaten to, to, to lead to uh, eventual attacks on us, while still recognizing that the only way we're going to solve the underlying Syrian conflict is through some sort of political settlement, and we're going to have to work through the international community in order to accomplish that. We can't own that uh, because we've been down that path, and uh, it's too costly in blood and treasure. And it is not something that we ultimately think would be effective. Mr. President, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. So the president's new timeline is weeks of debate in Congress before any vote. And in the meantime, serious diplomacy with the Russians and the Syrians to see if they mean what they say about placing Assad's chemical weapons under international control.
Brett? It is interesting to see this whole thing flip. I mean, this started today as we laid out with what looked like an offhanded comment by the Secretary of State that was called a rhetorical argument by the State Department, then a Russian proposal that the president there seemed like he was trying to own.